Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got a little bit of breaking news today. The nation's broadcasters here in the U.S. are asking the FCC to lock in a 2028 date for the transition to the new next-gen TV over-the-air television standard. And along with that ask, they are requesting to stop simulcasting many of their shows right now to push more viewers into new television sets or at least new tuners. We're going to dive into what they're asking for right now. Now, before we get into this topic, I do want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by all of you. That includes everyone who watches me on these diatribes every once in a while, along with those of you who subscribe, and of course, those who have been contributing to the channel on an ongoing basis through my donor box page at lon.tv support, through Patreon, the YouTube membership program, and Floatplane. We also have that merch store where you can get some cool coffee mugs and t-shirts and all sorts of other stuff to help support the channel here. So I want to thank everyone for their ongoing support of the channel. It means a lot and it's really a lot of fun to dive into these topics and bring this information to you. So let's dive into what the broadcasters are asking of the FCC. And they met with Brendan Carr, the new chairman, the other day and filed this letter with a summary of all the things they're looking for. Some of their asks go beyond the ATSC3 transition date. The big one they're asking for here is for a rollback of regulations regarding local and national broadcast TV ownership. The broadcasters say that they're in direct competition with Google and Facebook. They're all competing for the same advertisers. Google and Facebook can get as big as they want and be more competitive on pricing as a result. The broadcasters say we're at a competitive disadvantage here because we're restricted as to how many stations we can own nationally or within a particular market. So they want to be able to get bigger so they can compete against the likes of Google and Facebook. And there's probably a good reason for this to happen just because the scarcity of broadcast is no longer as scarce as it used to be. So right now I'm on a Google platform communicating with you. It costs me nothing to send out a video that could potentially reach millions of people. And Google has really no restrictions on how far they can reach, how many people they can have, how big their business can get. Broadcasters say it's not fair to them that they can't get as big as the big tech companies get. Now, the next ask that the broadcasters have on their list will undoubtedly make your YouTube TV subscription even more expensive. What they want is for YouTube TV and Hulu and others that retransmit local broadcasts to be treated the same as a cable provider. And so what that means is that right now, your local ABC affiliate, for example, can negotiate with the cable company for carriage rights and the costs associated with it. So that's why you often see your local cable company battling it out with the locally owned broadcaster. However, when it comes to YouTube TV, that deal is made between the national network. If we're talking about an ABC affiliate, ABC negotiates directly with YouTube TV and that is what applies across the entire country of every ABC affiliate. Local broadcasters want the regulations changed so that the streaming providers are treated the same so that they can negotiate directly, which will undoubtedly increase your YouTube TV bill. Right now, and I just canceled my uh, cable TV subscription, I was paying $36 a month just in local TV rebroadcast fees. So this is how bad it's gonna get if they are granted this and I could see it happening. And then they get to the ask about the ATSC3 transition date. And along with this letter, they also sent in a request for rulemaking to lock in a date certain, which we'll get to in a second. So what they said here in their letter is that the commission has been very much focused on 5G and other data transmission technologies and they would like the commission to provide some guidance and leadership now on getting this ATSC3 thing off the ground finally after all of these years of simulcasting ATSC1 and ATSC3 signals together. And we talked about this the other day when we took a look at the future of television report that was sent to the FCC after years of work. And this report was written by a number of different stakeholders, many of them with competing interests. And the report basically indicated that nobody could agree as to when the transition should occur. So the broadcasters here are saying, hey, we'll come up with a date here. We would like to see this happen because it's costing us more money to support both standards. And we think it's time for a date certain. So what they are suggesting here in their request for rulemaking is that the top 55 markets, which would include my market here in Connecticut, will be transitioned fully 
in February of 2028. In other words, on that date or that month, when the transition occurs, there will be no more ATSC 1.0 signals in the market. There might be some waivers for smaller or non-commercial stations if they need more time, but basically this would lock it in for the largest stations in the US. Then the smaller ones would have until February of 2030, and that would set some dates certain here so that everybody who's involved in broadcast television can get prepared for the transition. Now, there are some things though that the broadcasters would like to see happen immediately. One of their big requests here is that they end the substantially similar requirement for simulcasting. So right now, a station that broadcasts in ATSC 3 has to also offer that station in the older ATSC 1 format so that viewers can get their TV stations. The broadcasters here would like to end the requirement that both broadcasts need to be similar to each other. In other words, they can take some of their higher value programming and put that on the ATSC 3 signal and their lower value stuff on the 1.0 signal. And they want that rule change right now to push the market to get to the transition points. So everybody is ready by the date that they would like to see this done by. And broadcasters are also asking the FCC to mandate ATSC3 tuners in every single television sold in the United States. Now they're not asking for this to happen tomorrow, but they want a very swift transition to begin so that by the time we get to 2028, every television you can buy has a compatible tuner inside. Right now, the rules are that it is optional to include an ATSC3 tuner. And because it's optional, many manufacturers don't put these tuners into their lower end televisions. It's only the higher end ones that have it. So the broadcasters clearly see the need to get these tuners out there. And they want the FCC to mandate that every one of these sets gets one. Now remember, we've got a lawsuit currently in play here uh, between LG and a company that claims they have patents on the ATSC3 tuning technology. Those patent holders chose to sue LG first. They won, and as such, LG has to pay a substantial amount of money to this group every time they sell a television. And this is currently in appeal, and I think this case has to get settled before this rule can go into place because these patent holders could very well sue everybody else too for the same amount of money and really make this a lot more complicated. So I'm, I'm guessing that's gonna have to get resolved before the FCC is going to move to mandate this technology get put into place because if the lawsuit is successful on appeal, it could dramatically increase the prices of television sets and that's going to, of course, slow down adoption of this technology. Another thing that was mentioned, and I was surprised to see it, was DRM. And this is where the broadcasters, I think, are misleading the FCC a bit. Now, what they tell the FCC here is that, hey, we've got these encoding rules that require every broadcaster to allow people to record as much as they want and keep those recordings forever. What they didn't tell the FCC in this section of their filing is that those rules, which they made up, only apply to simulcasts. And we were just talking about how the broadcasters want to end simulcasting as soon as possible and put their higher value TV shows on the ATSC3 signal, which is not subject to these rules. Now, if they want to change the rules, that'd be great. However, there's still a lot of other restrictions that the DRM has put in place that make things very difficult, which we'll get to in a second. The other thing they bring up here are the number of tuners that are out there, which they say currently sell between $90 and $250. And the TV boxes they're referring to here are the ones that are certified to decrypt the encrypted signal from the broadcaster. And the crazy thing is, is that every single one of these boxes they're referring to require Google, their arch enemy, to operate. They have a Google Android operating system on board. They have Google DRM. And there is no other device other than a Google device that can actually decrypt the television signals, which makes this so crazy. And just think about it, if they didn't have to go through the process of all this encryption and decryption certification, think how much less expensive these boxes would be right now because they didn't have to go through all of these hoops and, by the way, pay Google all of this money to even make the device in the first place. And of course, we still have a lack of support for gateway devices, even though the broadcasters promised this support exactly a year ago. We have yet to see any of these manufacturers get it to work. 
And meanwhile, consumer preference when looking for ATSC3 tuners is clearly in the camp of a gateway device where you have a single device plugged into a single antenna that can deliver content to any device you have in your home with a screen. We've talked about this ad nauseum. This is the current uh, listing on Amazon of the top selling ATSC3 tuners. The top selling one is the HD Home Run Flex 4K, over a thousand bought in this past month alone versus 50 plus of the next two, the uh, Zapper Box and the uh, device here from Zinwell. So clearly people want gateway tuners and the broadcasters have yet to figure out how to make gateway tuners work a year later after they made the promise that they would. Now I do expect to see some opposition from the cable TV industry, specifically around the cost of the transition. When we looked at that report last month, the cable TV folks were concerned about having to get all new equipment to handle the HEVC video codecs and the Dolby AC4 audio codecs, not only for their retransmission facilities, but also on the customer side. And they said it was going to cost a lot to transition. And in this recent filing that the NAB just put into the FCC, they don't want to pay anything. They want the cable companies to bear the complete cost here. And their argument is that if you establish a clear timeline, then the cable companies will have plenty of time to plan and budget and manage the cost of the transition. I don't think the cable companies are going to be all that pleased with that component. So we'll have to see what happens here. My prediction is that this chairman is going to push to approve this deadline to get the ball rolling already. It's been going on long enough I am sure he would love to have that spectrum used in different ways, and the sooner that this whole thing can implode for him, the better. So that is where I think things are going. I am not very confident that we'll see any changes to the DRM, and that ultimately, I think, will speed up the process of broadcast television as we know it falling apart because they're making it much more difficult for consumers to watch television the way they've been watching it for the last 20 years. So that is my prediction. But we can still keep sending in our complaints and concerns to the FCC. If you go to lon.tv slash FCC instructions, you can file on the docket like thousands of others have already, protesting the broadcaster's desire to encrypt over the air television. So those things are getting up there. They are seeing them. I just don't think it's going to make much of a difference at this point, but it is still worth submitting your concerns because there will be some hearing on this and the more customers who complain, the better. So that will do it for this one. I think 2028 is likely going to be the date. So about what, three years from now, we might be transitioning to this new standard. Let me know what you thought down in the comment section. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.